Long time no see, UNCW that is, and welcome back to The Current. I'm your host, Heather Cunningham. If you're looking for pop culture updates, relevant news, and all things UNCW, you're in the right place. This week, we'll update you with everything from Amazon to Game of Thrones to SpaceX and more. And make sure to stick around for an interview with Communication Studies Department Chair, Dr. Rick Olson. Life's been pretty crazy in the American sphere lately and on planet Earth for that matter. So let's find out everything that's been going on in two minutes with Ian Zeth. Ian? Summer is officially over, so it's time to cozy up by the fire and break out all the sweatshirts you've taken from loved ones. I'm Ian Zeff, and I'm here to get you caught up on what's been happening this week. First up, Amazon's yearly Prime Day deals are out today, and they will continue until tomorrow. So, the holiday shopping madness is upon us. Saudi Arabia and Japan are teaming up to use blue ammonia as a new source of electricity with zero carbon emissions. SpaceX is getting ready to launch its next wave of network satellites known as Starlink. The goal of Starlink is to create a network that will help provide internet services to those not yet connected and provide reliable, affordable internet access to the globe. In more space-related news, electronic ballots have been sent to NASA's Johnson Space Center so that American astronauts can securely vote in the upcoming election this November. In entertainment news, Regal Cineworld has announced that 536 theaters will close in the U.S. and about 127 venues are supposed to close in the U.K. Walt Disney World is also set to lay off around 28,000 of their employees across its various parks due to the impact of the coronavirus. Calling all Game of Thrones fans, actors Kit Harington and Rose Leslie, notably recognized as Jon Snow and Ygritte, announced that they are expecting their first child. That's been this week's weekly wave of information with Ian Zeff. Have a great rest of the week. Hi, I'm Sarah Hughes, and today with me we have the Communication Studies Department Chair, Dr. Rick Olson. Hi, thank you for coming, welcome. Absolutely, thanks for having me, Sarah. All right, so today we are gonna talk about the coronavirus and how it has affected you and the learning experiences of the students and the Seahawk community. Yeah, that's a large topic. Yeah, so um, first question, we're gonna start off as, how do you think COVID is affecting the learning productivity in the classrooms? Well, you know, it's interesting. I'm right in the middle of grading some papers, and some of them have been the best I've ever read. So mm -hmm. it's, I think what's happening is the ceiling hasn't gotten lower. The, the student performance is still as good as it ever can be, but I know a lot of folks who get lost are really lost, and that's, I think, the harder challenge for us is making sure everybody's coming along. So have you noticed a, a difference in how well students are performing in their online classes versus when it's in person? Yeah, I think, I think you know, just that incidental contact, has, talking to somebody who says, hey, have you studied for the exam, or where are you studying? All of that stuff is, has to be so much more intentional, mm -hmm. and the folks that aren't doing those things are, are feeling you know, quite, quite lost. Yeah, and have you adapted to the online teaching? Yeah, um, I've got 140 students signing up for a Zoom meeting every 8 a.m. Uh, we're doing the online version of the clickers, so you know those of you who took the earlier version, it's not any easier for the for the current folks. So it's been very hard um, lecturing to 125 black screens with names on them. You know, is is definitely a different challenge, but it, some stuff's been good. I mean, some stuff's been better in, mm -hmm. in some ways. So have you enjoyed the experience so far, or? Can't wait to get back into the <laughs> yeah. normal classrooms. Enjoy would be uh, a little strong, but um, certainly making the most of it. Nobody laughs at my jokes anyway at 8 a.m., <laughs> so there's no big drop off there. Um, but the, I think the thing that I've enjoyed the most has probably been, you know, when you teach a large lecture, there's typically a large lecture coming in right after you. Mm -hmm. So it's get out of the class, get out of the class in five minutes because the next class is coming in. And now I can say class is over and I'll hang out for questions until there's no more questions. And that's been a nice space mm -hmm. and time to just relax and, and chat without the rush of trying to get out of the classroom. Yeah, so you've uh, noticed more that students 
are they more participating in the Zooms or is it about the same since it, it's, it's 8 a.m.? Yeah, it's about the same. I mean, different people participate, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, one of the hard parts for me is that a big part of my class when it's live is turn to, turn to your neighbor and talk for 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. And that's been really helpful in large classes, but it doesn't work for breakout rooms. You can't get in and out of a breakout room. Yeah. So I've got to figure out, everybody is figuring out the tools. How do I use breakout rooms correctly? How do I just get people to talk without turning for 30 seconds and mm -hmm. chatting? So the chat feature has been good. You know, I've been able to say just, to, you know, give me some answers in the chat. What are people thinking? And that's been pulling in some, some input. So you think it could improve in the future if we have to continue? Yeah, online? I think like with everything, you learn the tools, you mm -hmm. learn what works and what doesn't. And ideally, the student feedback, I mean, that's why idea is important even under conditions like this where students might go, you know, my other teacher did this. And you're like, oh, man, that's so great. I'll yeah. do that, you know. And so how do you think COVID will affect students and professors going forward? Well, I hope everybody realizes we're not going back to what it was. Like mm -hmm. Zoom is here, you know, in the same way that PowerPoint was this new weird thing. And now everybody uses PowerPoint like it's no big deal. I would imagine things like Zoom, greater use of Canvas, online exams, a lot of those things, VoiceThread, a lot of the technologies that we're learning to get through COVID are going to stick around. Mm -hmm. um, especially, I think, the Zoom conferencing and, and, and even perhaps some asynchronous content. A lot of my faculty uh, and a lot of the chats I'm in across campus are saying, oh, the best of my asynchronous modules is better than anything I ever did in class. Mm -hmm. So they're going to keep those and we'll do other things with class time. And speaking of Zoom, since it's becoming the most popular thing for yep. classes, what's been your most interesting Zoom experience? Uh, well, the dude taking class from bed with his shirt off. Uh, that was, I was kind of like, okay, well, uh, one way to advertise. But uh, yeah, I told him to, you know, go ahead and click that screen off. But um, probably the funnest thing has been the times when people have incorporated the virtual screens into the meeting. So we've done things like, where would you rather be mm -hmm. as your virtual screen or nice. a screen related to your first job ever? You know, so that was kind of fun to see, you know, gas stations or, you know, uh, you know, John Deere tractors or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, just going on. So that was kind of fun when we used the technology a little yeah. bit. And speaking of the Zoom backgrounds as well, uh, what is, have you used any of the Zoom backgrounds yourself? I have. I mean, I've had, I had some fun. I did one with um, The Walking Dead, you know, it's sort of uh -huh. a zombie background for, for uh, a fun message I was putting out. And then, but most of the time, I'm, I'm like everybody else, I'm trying to find a way to stay calm <laughs> in all of this. So I, I've taken some pictures from, you know, some of the marshes and some of the beautiful spots in Wilmington. And I like using those because they're real. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, taking pictures of, of a boat ramp near my house and that kind of thing, you know, so right, right there, that's Trails End and that's where I'm able to put in my kayak. And so, uh, you know, I downloaded it into PowerPoint, hit the little paint effect mm -hmm. onto, the, onto the picture and then I've used that a lot. And that's gotten some good comments like, oh, where is that, you know? So that's been kind of cool. It's almost like you could be in class from anywhere yep. in the world pretty much. Yeah. And what has been your favorite so far? Has it been the the yeah, ones that you take? Or yeah, I think, yeah, that's just been nice because it's, I, I, you know, I can go there right after this meeting. Yeah. <laughs> if you use that potato filter at all, it turns you into. Uh, yeah, no, I haven't, but I did find out you can use the Snapchat filters. I actually did not know that. So, yeah, <laughs> if you update to the latest Zoom, and I found that out with a meeting with one of my other faculty members, and I was like, oh, I love your background. Is that, you know, he's a gamer. He, he studies gaming, and he's like, oh, watch this. And next thing I know, he was a full Viking warrior, uh, full headgear, full armor. And I was like, what, what are you doing? And so, yeah, so that's really kind of fun. Oh, they're, they're getting better with all the Zoom stuff. They're yep. really, I guess, doing dis different stuff now that everyone's using it. Yep. And I think our final question uh, is, what is, what are you looking forward to for the next semester? Yeah, I think, you know, like so much has changed. We, Florence just hit us and all we did was deploy the airbags and try and survive the wreck, right? Mm -hmm. and, then, and then the fall came and, and there was thousands of hours of training for faculty. I mean, they put in thousands of hours of training and, w you know, we tried to get a really good course done. But of course, like anything, it's a rough draft mm -hmm. and uh, maybe it's a really good rough draft. But now in the spring, I think a lot of people are going, oh, this worked, this didn't. My students like this. They didn't like this. 
And I think a lot of folks are going, well, spring will be a chance to get it right. Mm -hmm. um, and I think students are finding out which modalities work well with their learning styles, you know, and going, oh, wow, I thought I'd hate this, but I liked it. Um, so I'm hoping that spring becomes sort of the fall we wanted. Um, you know, until there's a vaccine, it's not likely we're getting really, really back to normal. So yeah. I, I, my hope is that we all feel proud of the work we do as students and proud of the work we do as teachers and kind of go, okay, now that I know what I'm doing in all of this, I'm going to do it really well in the spring. And what are you looking for for next year if there's like a vaccine? Oh, well, or? a vaccine. Yeah. That's my number one hope. All I want for Christmas is a vaccine. But, um, you know, I, I think that the results of a vaccine, the results of feeling like it's safe again, mm -hmm. I think it's really weird that my vapor could be deadly. And so yeah. even when I want to talk, I don't talk. And now we're having to make Face sure we're, yeah, we're far enough apart. And, and you know, just I, I miss going to the rec center playing basketball. So mm -hmm. the first time I'm able to do that again, it will just feel like, OK, we made it. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you think we'll see the lecture halls anytime soon full of students? I'm hoping fall. I really, I really think if, if things go as, as they're hoping, we can be back uh, to some sense of normalcy for the fall, you know, mm -hmm. and that would be amazing. Well, thank you. That Absolutely. concludes our questions. But if you would like, we would like to play a word association game with you. Absolutely. So I will say a single word, and you just say the first word that comes to your mind. It'll be really fast, popcorn style. All righty. And so are you ready? I'm ready. All right, here we go. Pumpkin. Spice. Zoom. Meeting. The presidential debate. Disgusting. <laughs> uh, baby Yoda. Cute. Iced coffee. My wife, Rachel. Halloween. S children. Vote. Please. 2020. Goodbye. TikTok. Don't get it. Uh, face masks. Uh, one word. Face mask. Um, vital. Uh, pineapple on pizza. No. Oh. And uh, 2021. <laughs> Soon. Well, thank you so much. That concludes the Word Association. Thank you for coming on to The Current and talking with me and I had a great sharing time. it with thank all you. the people. Thank you. All right, Heather, and back to you. Thanks, Sarah, and thank you all for watching. This sure has been fun, Wilmington, but it's time to go. See you next time on The Current, and happy fall, y'all.